today we start a brand new project in a town that started a revolution. This house was built in 1880 here in Concord, Massachusetts. And it's just down the road from the site of the first shot of the American Revolution. After many sloppy renovations, a young couple from the city would like it restored the right way. And we've got just the team for the job. There it is. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. That is beautiful. Nice. Listen, my children, and you shall hear. Listen, my children, and you shall hear. Listen, my children. Must get the carpet. Must get the carpet. Must want farmers in carpet. Must want carpet. Must want farmers in carpet. Must want carpet. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. Now remember, you get a ride through every Middlesex village and farm. Ride, Pops? Yeah. I don't even like horses. <laughs> and why do you keep calling me Paul, by the way? And Richard, what's the deal? You're a redcoat? No, no, I'm going behind enemy lines as a spy. And if the British march by land or by sea from town tonight, I'll hang a lantern aloft from the belfry arch of the North Church Tower as a signal light. Yeah, and remember, it's one if by land and two if by sea. Two if by sea. Don't forget, Richard. Okay, I got it. Uh, Pops, what about you? What, what are you doing? Don't you worry about me, Sonny. You keep the feet in the syrups. You got a 13 mile ride to Lexington, so get going. Right, and you gotta go on from there to Concord and warn everybody. I'll send you a signal. 15 miles? Did, did you not hear me? I don't like horses. Get going. All right, one if by land. One if by land. Wait, wait. One, two, two by, one. No, you def definitely didn't say three. So one if I land, two. So one. How to happen. Jen! 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 What? Quick, get your men folk. Men folk? Or you. you, you can come. That's right, I got this. All right, let's go. Forget them anyways, they're gaming. Fortnite? Yep. Must get the car, must get the car. Hey, Charlie. Sorry. Yeah, I know the weather's nice down there, but I need you in Concord starting tomorrow. We just got the building permit, and we need to get this place weather tight. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. All right, perfect. Thanks. Hey, guys, you wouldn't believe the dream I had about Concord. What? Pops, you feeling okay? Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor, and welcome back to a brand new season of This Old House. Today, we're headed to Concord, Massachusetts. It's about time. Yep, and there it is. Look at that. Nice. So the house was built in 1880, and it started off just as a little tiny cape right there. But our homeowners who live in the city, they've got a growing family, so they figured it's time to come out to the suburbs. Well, it's a classic look. It is. All right, we're going to let you guys go and we'll check out our departments. I'm going to check out the landscape. And I'm going to the basement. And we're going to meet the homeowners. You know, I think Tommy's been in the sun a <laughs> little bit too long. That or a little too much social media. <laughs> Hello, hey. how are you? Great, how are you? Megan, Megan, nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet, nice to meet you, you as well. well. Welcome. Thank you. So tell us your story. How'd you end up here? 
Uh, so I grew up in the area. I always loved this horse farm that was next door. And uh, then this house became available and it just felt kind of like fate. Yeah. So we, uh, we live in the city with our son, he's two, and we realized that we really wanted to find a place where we could grow with our family, where we could be outside, especially with COVID. Turns out being in an apartment is pretty crampy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we decided it was time to, to start thinking about a move. Okay, and so you both work in the city, so now you're gonna sort of live here and commute back into there. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, That'll be a change. Yeah, as the world is moving more towards telecommuting, though, uh, it is a lot more helpful to be able to not have to go in a couple days a week. Right. So we'll be able to work from here. Okay. Yeah. The new normal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys yeah. want to show us around? You got a gym yeah. here. Yeah, sure. Kevin, why don't I show you downstairs? All right. Thank All right. You. Tommy, can I show you All upstairs? Right. Sure. Lead the way. So, Kevin, this is the original living room of the house, uh, built in 1880s, this Cape style house. Yeah. And one of the things we love about it is how cozy it is, but one of the challenges is that um, it's a really fragmented uh, style of, of home, and so we don't get to really experience the yard. It's very cut off. Um, cut off by walls like this one right here. Exactly. And exactly. the yard, the view of that being off the back here? Off the back here and all the way down, there's a pond down there. It's, it's really spectacular. You gotta stick your head in the bay to take advantage of it, okay. Exactly. Although you've got the fireplace, which is beautiful. Uh, you like that? We do, we love it. Um, definitely wanna keep it. We think it's really cozy and we're actually gonna turn the space into our kitchen. I mean, kitchen here? Kitchen here, yeah. And how's that layout? Uh, so there'll be a pantry against this back wall. Mm -hmm. um, the walls here are coming down and this whole wing over there is actually coming down. And so the pantry wall right here, kitchen forward? Yep, pretty much. So basically where you're standing will be our stove. Right. Um, then we'll have an island that's here. Mm -hmm. The sink will be about here. That will stretch into what's currently the dining room. Right. Yeah. And then you say it sort of comes into this room. Right. We think that this area here was probably put on in the 50s mm -hmm. as with sort of the extension of the living room. Um, and so it's it's currently being used or was being used as the dining room. It's it's not a bad room. The floors are a little different. Yeah. Um, so that was definitely something that we would want to, to get rid of. We actually really like the big windows here. Yeah, this um, is the view that you want to take advantage of. So yeah. sort of accomplishing that. Yeah, it, it, it is. And I think what we're hoping to do is actually open this up and put in a new great room that extends farther out into the yard. So push the building out sort of to where the deck is or maybe beyond. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. A little bit beyond, we'll have a new deck um, that will really help bring the outside in. Okay, and then does the dining room sort of eating area stay here or this kitchen spills into just a big great room? So this will be, the kitchen will spill in here and then it'll just spill into the great right, room. Right, because you said the dining room table's over there. Yep. All right. Yep. And so the old kitchen, and speaking of dated, you get that with the old kitchen. I mean, you know, functional and all, but yeah. clearly could be updated. Yeah, it's, it's perfectly fine, um, but doesn't exactly match our dream for our kitchen. Yeah. You know, I think even just the fact that there's no place for our family to be in here, there's no sort of eat-in opportunity, everything's just a little, a little dated, so. Yeah, you can definitely update this, you can do better. But yeah. again, kitchen sort of, so what does this space become? So it's actually going to become an entry. So oh, nice. we're putting a, a, a covered porch right about there, and so the entry door will be here, and you can either walk in and go into the great room or yeah. straight down that hallway over there. Control the traffic, little mud room. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And then you said that another addition back in this direction? Yes, exactly. So this wing was put on in 1980. Uh, this is used as a sunroom, living room. This is the side entry here. Uh, we have this lovely laundry room. Oh, okay. So washer, dry, dryer up top. <laughs> yeah, it's very easy to use. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, we, we, we like how they, uh, they really, in. yeah, nice built in. They opened it up to the yard. Yeah, so they did what you're trying to do, right? Which is a pretty good idea. You got the beautiful yard, so a wall of glass. What's wrong with this? I mean, it's dated, obviously, but yeah. right idea? I mean, it's getting close. It is our, one of our favorite rooms in the house. Sure. But we're really excited about pushing our living space out into the yard so we have views down that way and then we have views all the way down to the rest of the yard down to the pond down there uh, which are blocked from here because of this which is what exactly so this is a garage okay. um, this will also be coming down we'll be building it 
in a similar position, just forward a little bit. So then above the garage, we'll put a new master suite, right. um, which will be nice. The, the current one is on the first floor, right next to the foyer, and it's just a little dark. And, and so we're gonna take that divided into two rooms. One will be a home office, one will be a, a music room or a yeah. den. Okay. Um, so this little old cape's gonna have quite a bit of space. It will have quite a bit of space, yeah. All right. And I know Tommy's checking out the upstairs, so we'll get the story on that too. Sounds good. Let me show you this bathroom here. Oh boy, look at this. <laughs> wow, long and narrow. Yeah. And even the shower is small. And the ceiling is really low. If I can touch the ceiling, you know it's low. <laughs> All right, what do we got over here? This room is pretty nice. Yeah, this one is one we think we're actually going to keep. Pretty, do as little as we can with it. Yeah. Uh, it'll be nice for our son. Uh, yeah, get nice some little kids storage room. areas. I like the light, the natural light is coming in here. It's really nice. Yeah. And let me show you these drawers. These have been here. We think they're original. They could be. Oh, yeah. They work pretty good. They have poplar bottoms, solid wood, sides. Yeah, they really work good. They've been here a long time, I bet. Let me show you the second real bedroom in here. Uh, this is a nice room. All the natural light. It feels nice and airy because of this section of it is so high. Yeah, we love it. And we're going to keep most of this more or less the same. The big change is going to be we're going to add in a hallway over here so that we can connect to the new addition. You're right, the new addition. So the hallway will come up, take it here, and then you could probably, if you needed to, you could make a closet somewhere, maybe in this space. But uh, yeah, I mean, we know that's an addition. It wasn't original to the house because we found some rot in there and everything else. So rather than play with all of that, it's easier and faster and probably cheaper to take it down and start fresh. Sounds good. All right, I'm excited. It's going to be great. Yeah. You can see that our house sort of sits up high on this hill and at the side yard, which they want to get a view of, is expansive. Andrew, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Kevin. So the house is kind of deceiving. You know, from the front, you really just get that old traditional cape look. But from this side angle, you can see that it really stretches back. It's been added onto over the years. And now we're back at it again with your help. Correct. So what is the plan? So the plan is that the house is too small and their kitchen needs to be larger and they really wanted a kitchen and family room that connected to each other, and really a house that took advantage of this view. And the key was really pulling something out this way so that you could pick up the views down this site, which you can't from the existing house. So will you walk me through the evolution? I mean, as I look at your plan right here, this is the front of the house that you'll see from the street, the original 1880s Cape. And then the transition, your evolution kind of goes from here and back, right? Correct. And so what is that evolution? Well, it involves a couple of things. In two dimensions, it's hard to see. In three dimensions, it's a little easier. But it involves the original cape, because that's becoming the uh, kitchen, we're using traditional windows to wrap that corner to give more light and a little bit of a modern feel because of those are wrapped windows, but in a traditional vocabulary. Yep. And then up by the original fireplace, that's really where we're coming out with a new addition. We're coming forward with a wall this way that still has traditional elements in the Beverly Jog. But by the time we've gotten to the new addition, we've got a very modern corner of glass with butt glazing. And then it really transitions into a much more modern addition where there's floor to ceiling glass. Bumps out this way. Correct. I'm noticing a roof line that's higher than we have right here. And is this the space that Lincoln was telling us about, the ability to get from the front of the house to the back house, the new addition? Correct. In order to take advantage of the views, we have the master bedroom and Megan's office back here that looks across the, the terraces of stone. But this is our connector where we sort of want to separate the two volumes and the roof drops down. Right. And it's essentially a walkway between the two. So when the public passes this house in the front, they're going to see traditional cape. Um, and a person's going to have to be invited into the house or invited into the yard to see the addition, the modern elements here, right? Yes, very much, very, very intentional that we want it to evolve from the inside and draw you through. Yeah. So there's always a sense of, of something else and, and the space opens up and draws you to explore. Great. And from the outside, we want it to evolve so that it never feels like it's a harsh transition. But there's a little hint that that modern glass on the corner is meant to say, well, there's something going on there. Maybe you want to go find out what that is. Well, we're excited to see that evolution, and we appreciate your help. So uh, stick with us, and, and we'll follow along. Happy to be here. Thank you, Andrew. Hey, Richard. Hey, Kev. Oh, this is pretty nice, but uh, not dank, not dark. Only headroom, not dirty, yeah. not dark. 
So I want to take you through the mechanicals here. They've got an existing boiler. When you ever come into these buildings, I look at for the history lesson. And so you can see right here, see the paint change right here? Yeah. This was probably originally a big coal-fired boiler, right? This was in 1880. 1880, so it would have been before electricity was really there. So coal would have been the choice. They probably switched it to oil. And then when they did, they had radiators all through the building. So somebody did a really nice job adapting onto the old piping right there and, and converting it back by to copper down to this command center right here. So you this can see. pretty good looking. Right, it's, this is really well done. It was seven zones in this relatively small place. That's terrific. All right. So now the question is, what do you do? Um, you know, we, we really want to use water because water unlocks a lot of stuff for us in a cold climate. If we have heated water, we can use it to tie onto the existing radiators or baseboard if we choose to use them. We also could do radiant in certain parts of the building. We can continue to do what they're doing now, which is use the boiler's power to heat up a coil in here for the water for the faucet. Right. So you have one burner that you load manage. And finally, you could use it to do a thing called hydroware, where you could have heated water go through a hot water heating coil that blows air across it, and then you could have ducted heating and cooling. Can we do all of that with something that size? Absolutely. And it's more than big enough. It's two times bigger probably than we'll need. So the question really is, do, I, do we keep this? Right? Or do we put something more modern? I'm not sure yet. Okay. I am, though. You can't keep a, a device that's 30, 40 years old. Maybe. Some people wouldn't. I mean, you know, if it's working, leave well out of the lunch. So we got to figure that all out. But at least we know we are in the world of water going that's right. forward. That's right. Okay. All right. And speaking of water, there's a full-size water main. We're good that way. If we don't have to change that. And I really want to call out, one of the best things I saw in this house is right here. <laughs> Look at you. A main water shut off. You shouldn't be allowed to buy a house without knowing where to shut the main water off. Like you have been preaching that for decades. Absolutely. Well, you've got to know where it is when there's a panic. Somebody finally listened. So i got one more thing to show you upstairs. There'll be plenty of plumbing on this job, re relocating the kitchen. This bathroom will be fully remodeled. Most of the bathrooms will be. Now, here you can see some evidence of the original heating system. You see these holes in the floor? That tells me there used to be a radiator right oh, here yeah, back right. in the old coal-fired system. And then somebody came along and added copper fin baseboard. As its name suggests, it's copper tubing with aluminum fins, and the air is drawn into the bottom. The heat that's in that water transfers and it pulls it up, and it does a really nice job convecting and wrapping the room, right? A million linear feet that's of right. installed. That's right, but it's not going to survive the test of time from a, from a appearance standpoint. Now, homeowners wanted to think about reusing some stuff, and one thing they might do is this. So here on the other end of the original building, you can see this cast iron baseboard. That's a lot different than that copper fin baseboard. A lot beefier. Right, it is. It's made out of cast iron. It doesn't rely on convection as much as radiation. So if you see it, you're going to feel it. Now, what we're thinking about doing is actually taking apart, the, they come in sections right here. There's nuts and bolts in the back taking it apart and reassembling it in the other half of the building. And that'll match that whole first floor. Because this wall and all of these walls are going down. This is so all going away. be moved anyway. Right. So now we know at least what the heating portion of the original building is. But in this new work, this is south and this is west. So we have to think about the cooling load in this very dramatic space with all the glass. And we've got to think about heating and cooling for the new addition that way. So we still got a plan to make for all right. the HVAC. Right. We're gaining on it, though. All right. Good. Thanks, Richard. Megan, you have a wonderful piece of property here. It's incredible with all these old growth trees. What are you thinking of doing with Thanks. it? Thanks. So we, we just love how it naturally is. So I think step number one is just to bring it back to its natural glory and, you know, get rid of sort of the invasives, the vines that are taking over some of these trees and the shrubs and just make it happy. That's a great idea. Clean it up, see what you actually have here and preserve what you can. Yeah, exactly. So what are you thinking of this space right here? So this space we're actually going to make into our vegetable garden. Um, love it. Love it. That's a great idea. Thank you. So the kitchen's right there. Uh -huh. Easy access. So we're going to probably plant some shrubs around the front. Okay. Um, and then otherwise just beds and hopefully a seating area so we can have our right, coffee so out here. This will kind of block it from the road a little bit, a little exactly. bit, little bit of privacy on this side. Yeah. I think it's great. Exactly. Kitchen garden. Exactly. Thanks. What about this front area? So, um, this area where it's currently a car park, we, okay. we're, we're hoping to take the asphalt out. Um, we, we really want to reduce the hardscape and reduce the asphalt as much as we can and replace it with uh, permeable pavers so the grass can go through. That's a great idea. Just soften the space, let the water go back into the earth. 
I love it. I Thanks. love it. And this whole front area, that's a gorgeous old stone wall. We, we love it. But what we'd actually like to do is just put in some, uh, some flowering bushes, maybe hydrangeas, lilacs along this side, just to give ourselves a little privacy from the street. I think that's a great idea. Those are old historic shrubs. They totally fit with this setting. So good choices. Awesome. Thank you. Well, why don't I take you to the back and I can show you the view. All right, let's look at the tour. Okay. So this is our yard. Uh, Beautiful. Thank you, we love it. You can see there's a, a pond down there over to the left. Mm -hmm. Then the yard just basically goes straight back and we're surrounded on two sides by a preserved horse farm. That so. is incredible. <laughs> thank you, yeah, we love these trees. So what's going on here in this space? So the new wing is basically going to come out directly towards us. Okay. Uh, and that will have a walkout basement. So at the bottom of the basement, we wanna have a, a patio. Okay. Where we can have some seating areas while hang out while kids are playing in the lawn mm -hmm. um, and then out from the new wing will be actually a screened in porch okay and that will basically stop right above our heads wow so you are really coming pretty far out we are yeah we just wanted to get into the yard as much as we could right and that's going to tie the inside to the outside perfectly yeah exactly so where are you gonna put the fire pit uh, fire pits up over here let me show you all right so this area of the property, we have these three terraces that are separated by stone walls and, and, and we love it. We feel like it's been here for hundreds of years. And they look like they've been here for hundreds of years, <laughs> yeah. but I love that. Awesome, thanks, us too. And so what we really wanna do is we wanna just clean it up. Um, we're gonna clean up probably all of the overgrowth around here, replace it with some sort of native ground cover, mm -hmm. uh, take the shed, clean it out and actually put it up in the woods so it's a play destination for our kids. Such oh. a great idea. Thank you could create you. a whole little trail system in here and they could go explore Thanks. while you're chilling out at your fire pit. Yeah. I really love, you're gonna preserve what's here and keep it natural. Awesome, thanks, us too. All right, Kevin, let's uh, put this safety fence down. So we've got material delays that we're gonna have to deal with. What about things you're excited about? What do you like about it? I like that it's not a complete gut reno. We're gonna be saving you know, some existing walls in this house, uh, some of the wiring. Uh, probably some of the plumbing, the heating for sure, right. you know, repurposing some of the heating. Hey so, guys, what's going good. on? So Jen, what do you think? We're uh, protecting this plant here for the tree you here. You better be protecting my tree here. So you're 10 feet out from the drip line, looks like. Yeah, that's what I was told. It's perfect, it's perfect. Thank you for respecting. <laughs> so Megan, um, your thoughts? I mean, are you nervous? This is a big yeah. project. Yeah, we're nervous, we're excited. It's by far the biggest thing we've ever done, but it's gonna be awesome. You, you've never owned a house before. Never a house, always apartments. <laughs> so you guys are diving in with home ownership, yeah. new kid, and a big renovation. Yep, yeah, right. the trifecta, why not? And, and you are primarily behind this decision to make sure that we can save what we can, and if we can't, it goes, where, where is it going? Uh, so we have a couple things. I think there are things we're gonna reuse in the house when we can. Um, the things that we can't reuse in the house, we're going to send to actually to Haiti to some families that live there. Oh, nice. Um, who so could really cool. use it, so. Yeah. yeah, all right, good. Well, here you go, here's your first oh, task. Oh, thank you. Charlie out right there. Uh, so we are excited to be back here in Concord, and next week we are gonna get busy by moving those radiators uh, and baseboard around, as well as shipping things wherever they may end up, Haiti or elsewhere. Uh, and so until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor for all of us here in Concord, Massachusetts with a brand new project. Next time on This Old House. There is no way we're going to throw away this beautiful old cast iron radiant baseboard. We're going to take this cast iron baseboard and repurpose it in that other part of the building that has the copper fin baseboard. Yeah. Getting rid of that. There's nothing wrong with these doors, so they're going to end up on a new project instead of a dump. What is it going to take me to get in this machine and have you show me around? We're here right now. You got no choice. I'm in your face. <laughs>